Good afternoon, Ennis. I'm Father Julian Borda, and as always, I am delighted to be here with you today. Today we're starting the third part of our series uh, about discerning God's will. And uh, in addition to talking about the general practice, talking about feeling and logic and science, today I'm going to talk about uh, a particular situation that has faced many of us in our lives and uh, one that challenges us. It is a simple one and yet one that uh, we often struggle with. Specifically, I'm talking about when you know what God wants. God has a way of speaking very clearly to us at times. In the Holy Bible, we have dozens and dozens of stories of God telling people to do this thing, to go to this place, to fulfill this calling. We see it with Abraham. We see it with Moses. We see it with Jonah. We see it with Jesus. We see it with Peter and Paul and basically all throughout Scripture. We see God speaking to people and telling them, I want you to do this. And there's a great blessing in that because there's great clarity. When God is very clear in directing the signs in our lives to a particular goal, when God tells us, take that job, do this ministry, become this thing, then we know. And that gives us a sense of purpose and that gives us a sense of clarity but sometimes what God wants is not what we want and when that happens as it has happened to me several times over the course of my life there is uh, a lot of stress that comes with that because we have this feeling of well but I know what I want and I this makes so much sense to me you know I want to go to this place. I want to go um, help this group, or I want to do this thing that'll make me rich, or that will make me happy, or that will make me feel fulfilled. And God says, nope, that's not what I want. I want you to do this. And I'm reminded in moments like this about St. Peter and his conversation with Jesus after the resurrection, in which Jesus says, as a young man, you were able to go wherever you wished, but now that you are older, you will be taken to where you don't want to go, and you will have to stretch out your arms for my sake. He understands that what he means is that Peter will be asked to take up his cross when he follows Jesus and in the end to be crucified and at the end of the day that is the the Christian calling in one way or another is to accept a cross whatever that cross may be whether it's sacrificing riches whether it's sacrificing happiness or comfort, familiarity, what have you. God is making clear to each of us when the time comes, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you too are to take up his cross and follow him. How do we do that? How do we do this thing which is overwhelming, which scares us, which is clear to us and a simple thing, but that we are unwilling to do? What we need is trust. We need trust the way that Abraham trusted in the Lord. And he told him, leave your family and leave your home. And I'll take you to a new one. Like Moses trusted. And he said, go and tell Pharaoh to tell up, uh, to let my people go. You need to 
have the trust that Jesus had when he himself went up to the cross. The trust that Peter had when he went to be crucified. The trust that St. Paul had when he went to be beheaded. And the trust that I have needed to find and that many of us have needed to find to do God's will. A trust that is well described in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future with hope. It is said in our Book of Common Prayer uh, that the way of the cross is none other than the way of life and peace. And though that doesn't make sense in our minds, though that seems very counterintuitive, uh, because life and peace are right here with us now and we don't need to worry about life and peace through the cross. What God is saying is, trust me. Told Israel to trust him and he delivered Israel and he's telling us to trust him to trust our future to him to trust our call to him to listen to whatever he is telling us to do and to do it because his plan is not to starve us in the desert to destroy us to lead us to death or to leave us hanging on a cross his plan is to give us hope, to give us a hopeful future, a resurrected life, and peace and joy in Him. Thanks be to God.